And the worst part about all of this is that marketing companies, pharmaceutical companies, and social media, they all know this. And yet they're still selling the magic pill remedies. Because the pain of being overweight or obese is anchored so deep in people that they're even willing to undergo injections, treatments, or surgery. The thing is that being overweight or obese isn't a disease that you catch it's a manifestation as your body is the physical display of your mind and if you're suffering from being overweight it's because you're out of balance your responsibilities your job your struggles your emotions they have taken over your health and fitness and diets they'll fail no matter their nature because there are just temporary fixes to a lasting problem that's laying under the surface and you've most likely experienced it but you don't have to take drugs to starve yourself to death or to do four hours of cardio per day in order to lose the weight what you need to do is to start by understanding your food patterns in order to then be able to rebalance your lifestyle and your nutrition in a sustainable way danger of food as comfort food is not a reward and when you treat food as a reward it becomes a source of cheap dopamine if food becomes cheap dopamine you'll turn to it every time that you need to ease the discomfort do this too much and you'll rewire your neural connections your brain will start to associate food as the go-to solution when you feel stressed overwhelmed sad angry or experience you pretty much any negative emotion and it becomes your emotional way out high palatable foods trigger the release of a lot of dopamine this activates the same pathway in your brain as drugs do which is why food addiction is a real thing the repetitions of a specific mechanism like a sequence you've taught your brain that food is the solution to stress to emotional overload there's been a linkage in your brain between a trigger and indulging in food your whole body has learned and encoded that response and now it feels almost impossible for it to wear off your hormone levels neural connections and dopaminergic system have all adjusted to this behavior making it a normal part of your functioning because you see the thing is that none of these systems have been designed for modern life nor modern food your brain wasn't built on the fact that you have access to unlimited calories for a couple of dollars by simply walking to the grocery shop think about this thousands of years ago people had to risk their lives and hunt to have access to the same type of food that you're just picking up off the shelf. But your brain hasn't evolved that much since then, and it's certainly not adapted to modern food. More than that, processed foods are designed to make you crave them. Think about it for a second. This is crazy. Companies spend millions of dollars to get you addicted to their products. And to me, that's a strong enough reason in itself not to buy them. Because your brain is not built for this easy, palatable calorie access. In fact, this may not even be your fault. If you've been overweight since childhood, it's likely influenced by parental food behavior. Because when you're young, you don't make your food decisions. Your parents, they do. They teach you food habits. And if they have themselves dysfunctional food patterns, you've picked up on them and copied them. The thing is that your relationship with food itself is probably inadequate. And this is visible on multiple levels. Your, your food choices, your metabolism, your fitness, your thoughts, emotional response, etc. You've internalized that food is a way to cope with life stressors. And that's an insidious game because food is just what it is, a necessary need, not a cheap dopamine distributor. Don't worry though, we're going to shed the light on this whole process. It's not just about food, your whole lifestyle needs to shift. Your food habits are just the tip of the iceberg. What's underneath is more important if you truly want to understand what led you to become overweight and how to get out of it. 20% of adults say they eat to manage stress. Now, stress is the most important factor when it comes to eating dysregulation. But first, I need to start off by saying that stress is a normal part of life. And when it's short term and manageable, it's even beneficial for performance and activation. And I dedicated a whole video on it that you can access I'll put the link in the description. That being said, long-term and constant exposure to stress is highly detrimental. The physical and emotional pressure it puts on your body will lead you to seek the comfort. This is when your body consciously and, and unconsciously turns to food, particularly highly palatable food, oftentimes very high in calories. Your body is stressed, your mind seeks for an escape and triggers cravings, 
foot thoughts, impulses, binging episodes. Now, stress is not the only one. Sleep is another huge factor. And in order to effectively regulate your metabolism, your hormones, your body requires sleep because it's essentially a state of body inactivation. And it's pretty much the only time where your body can repair damage and heal itself. This is the foundation of your health. Now, what's more interesting about it is that your hunger hormones are regulated through sleep too. And if you don't get quality sleep for a sufficient period, you will be out of balance. Your hunger will not be reset. More than that, sleep is also critical in regulating your emotional brain. During sleep, you sort everything out. Your mind unwinds and processes all the emotional storage that you've accumulated during that particular day. This is key to being emotionally stable. You have to give your brain enough time for it to be able to empty itself and, and filter the emotional information so that you can make sense of it. Now, if you don't get sufficient and quality sleep, your hormones will be out of place. You will be more prone to stress and your negative emotions will amplify. You will basically set the perfect context that leads to seeking your emotional way out through calorie dense savory foods and now i want to talk about something that's very important is that you don't want to get too fixated on the food part because food is just a behavior a manifestation you have to understand that this is a whole mechanism and and it's your lifestyle that's out of balance and that's the precise reason why dieting doesn't work dieting is restrictive it's only a quick fix to a problem that's much deeper than the overconsumption of calories Dieting fixes the behavior, but not the inner reaction, which is what most important. What you need is durability. Forget about anything that cannot be sustainable in the long run. Because even if you manage to lose the weight through dieting and you just realize afterwards that you have no idea how to stay lean, you will dive back into old unhealthy patterns. And the worst part is that you will feel completely lost and you will end up believing that staying lean is not achievable in the long term as it takes too much effort and it feels counterfeit because you had to work hard to get there. What you need is a complete approach that addresses the real problem to its root cause. The real issue lies in the fact that your relationship with food is dysfunctional, likely because your whole lifestyle is out of balance and you have a hard time regulating your emotions. And this holistic approach is the exact one that I use during my one-on-one -on -one online coaching. More info in the description if you're interested. But the only thing that you have to remember from this is that when it comes to weight management, if it's not sustainable, it doesn't matter. Your food response has been programmed. Your food response is directed by specific cues. Now, the appropriate trigger for eating is physical hunger. Now, it's not the only type of hunger that you'll find out there, and you have to be able to make the distinction between them. Hunger can be divided into three categories. First is physical hunger, which you feel through the body. Second one is external hunger that's triggered by your environment. And the third one is emotional hunger, which is a coping mechanism. In theory, physical hunger should be the only one that triggers the eating response. And if your eating habits are provoked by other cues, it will most likely lead you to overeat and emotional eating. The manifestations of physical hunger are mainly physiological. And it can include stomach growling, feeling of empty stomach, dizziness, lack of concentration, etc. The symptoms can vary between individuals, but physical hunger should be the primary out of the three, leading you to consume food. Basically eating food whenever your body is asking for it because you need energy. Now, external hunger is not triggered by the body, as I said, but external cues, such as food ads, the smell of food in the street, or grocery shopping. That's where food companies are making their big money. Now, the last element on our list is emotional eating, which is most likely your biggest struggle if you're watching this video. So let's dive into it. In this case, the trigger is most likely an emotion, feeling, or a mood. For example, stress triggers an emotion of stress in your body, a feeling of overwhelm in your mind, and an overall anxious mood. This emotional distress induces a general feeling of imbalance and, and unease. That trigger leads to food thoughts and cravings entering your brain as it's just trying to cope with it. And it uses that response that has been programmed in your mind in the past. Stress is the most common trigger, but grief, frustration, 
anger, shame, and other negative emotion can also provoke dysfunctional food use. You see, there's only one thing that your mind hates, and it's to be out of balance. So it seeks the quickest fix, which in that case is dopamine. Essentially, it tries to fight the pain induced by the imbalance through pleasure seeking. However, when a pleasure seeking is not adaptive, this response isn't sustainable. This negative state triggers intrusive food thoughts, and as your brain is trying to correct the problem, you're undergoing this state of panic. Now the pleasure seeking manifests in your head in the form of thoughts and it feels uncontrollable as food thoughts to just pop into your head and it feels like you don't have the grip over it. This leads to strong cravings, visualization of specific food and finally this can breach the thoughts and lead to a decision. That's exactly when it turns into a behavior. This is when you start snacking, eating or buying the food that you wanted to avoid. The biggest problem is that this reaction takes place on both a conscious and unconscious level. If unconscious, you might automatically put your hand back into the, the, the bag of chips, for example, only to realize that it's empty and you don't even remember opening it in the first place. But it is also conscious when, for example, you told yourself you'd stop snacking just to tell yourself two hours later that eating a single cookie can hurt that bad. And the solution to that, as I'm going to dissect in a five-step framework, is the combination of two skills, awareness and self-control. These two skills are your escape for overcoming robotic food use that is tainting your life. How to reprogram your mindset to rebalance your weight. One, forget about quick fixes. Free yourself from the illusion of magic pill solutions. Sustainable weight loss requires a long-term approach. It isn't something that clicks. It's a progressive adaptation of your lifestyle and your food choices. Don't get caught up in the fat diets, the online magic remedies, or the social media nutrition gurus. Follow what has been working for millennia, a diverse and balanced diet based on whole foods. Two, identify the triggers. Become aware of your unhealthy food patterns and more importantly, on their triggers. Avoiding to confront yourself will only make it harder as you'll keep reinforcing these behaviors over and over again. Because when it comes to emotional eating, understanding the emotional reaction and exploring it without judging it is the key. Now document your triggers and your reactions. I highly recommend using a journal that you will keep with you throughout your day. Treat this journal as a database to study your eating behaviors. Three, understand the reaction. In the case of emotional eating, you have to understand this sequence. The trigger leads to an emotion that leads to a thought, then comes the decision that leads to a behavior. Your goal is to be able to retrace every step and to become aware that this is a process and not a fatality. Know how this works and you'll be able to influence the course of it. This awareness foundation will stick with you for the rest of your life. Because the good thing is that once you're aware of it, you cannot unlearn it. Four, start building self-control. Funny thing is that weight loss is way more about the mind than it is about the body. Your body is just the result of the mental decisions that you make. And once you have awareness, the only thing that is left to practice is self-control. Basically building this mental resistance necessary to make the decision not to act when the emotional reaction chain is triggered. This is a skill that you have to practice to cultivate. Don't expect it to be instantaneous or you will end up resigning yourself thinking that you don't have it. And the last thing is to not expect it to be easy. These self-expectations, they have the power to sabotage your whole progress. You have to integrate that weight loss is based on consistent and daily efforts. It's a gradual process and that's the only way to get there. Don't expect, instead have a goal and work on it every day. Focus on what you can control. And why focus on the end result when you can pour your energy into controllable steps that will lead you there eventually. And as always, I hope this helps. Try the process.